Welcome to the ugly side of gardening, part three. Today we're gonna to focus on pests and diseases. If you'd like to learn more about gardening and eating healthy food, click subscribe now. So in many other videos, I go over in particular detail about particular pests and diseases and how to treat them once you have them in your garden. But today we're gonna to focus more on how to prevent them from entering your garden in the first place. The first way to avoid pests and diseases is to select a plant type that is resistant to them. There are many cultivars that are suited to resist a pest or disease that may particularly affect that type of plant. But one of the best ways that I've found to avoid pests and diseases is to select native plants as they are naturally suited to your particular environment. A quick Google search could show you what native plants are available to you in your particular area. If you are interested in edible natives like we are, then simply add edible into your Google search. One of our favorite native edible plants is the American Beauty Berry. We have many small bushes of these that are growing like crazy and they're practically self-sufficient as we have never had to treat them for neither pests nor diseases. Another thing of including native plants into your gardenscape is that they will introduce your natural predators into your garden. Birds and insects that not only will enjoy the native plants that you've selected, but also eat native bugs that infest your garden. Therefore, taking care of those nasty buggies for you and completing the circle of life. <laughs> Another preventative me measure for dealing with pests and diseases is planting companion plants that are going to affect the diseases and pests that may affect your particular plant of choice. For example, tomatoes have lots of bugs and pet diseases that like them, but that they don't like the scent of marigolds. So more often than not, I will make sure to plant a marigold right next to my tomatoes. Besides marigolds, herbs are another great selection for your garden. Not only will they provide fresh herbs for you to enjoy in your culinary efforts, but their strong aroma repels many pests. Any plant from the Allium family is another great companion plant for many of your garden selections. Not only will they provide garlics and onions for you to enjoy, but they're another strong aroma plant that makes many pests flee the area instantly. We are way past tomato season here in Florida, so I have neglected this particular tomato plant. And as you can see, we have some grossness <laughs> attacking our plant. That's a technical term. But basically, when you find any first signs of something like this on your plant, you wanna take care of it immediately rather than letting it become invasive. And that's my next tip on how to prevent diseases and pests, is to check your plants daily, particularly the underside of their leaves. The first sign you see of any trouble, you wanna start your preparation of preparing that plant for resistance immediately. Another thing to keep in mind when working with your plants to make them not as easily readable for pests and disease is two simple things that often get overlooked, and that's sunlight and water. You wanna make sure your plants get at least six to eight hours of full direct sunlight a day. A healthy, vigorous plant is going to be much more tolerant to resisting pests and diseases. Now, we all know plants need water, but the way you water might be more important than how much they're actually getting. We, in our raised bed area here, use a drip irrigation system. This keeps the water down at the base where the roots are, rather than spraying on the plants. Many diseases are attracted to a moist environment, so water droplets that remain on the plant throughout the day may invite a disease to attack your plant. Another way to deal with that extra moisture, particularly if you're in a high humidity area like we are here in Florida, is to keep your plants neat and trim. Lots of airflow within your growth habit is going to help that water evaporate and keep those diseases away. Another method we use to deal with pests and diseases is to make sure our soil health is optimal. We feed the soil rather than feeding the plant. And what this means is we make sure that there's a good mixture of organic material in the soil in the first place, rather than having to continually add additives into the soil. 
a good, rich, well-draining, healthy soil is going to keep your plants healthier and thus make them more resistant to pests and diseases. My final tip on resisting pests and diseases in your garden is simply to make sure your garden stays neat and clean. You want to remove any dead material from your garden as this, as you can see here, <laughs> is going to attract bugs that you may not necessarily want in your garden as they are attracted to the dead material. Once they're done eating this dead stuff, they might move on to the live stuff and that's not cool. You also wanna make sure to weed your garden regularly because weeds like this not only are going to compact the growing area, creating that stagnant airflow and keeping the moisture in your plants, they are going to compete with the plants you want to keep, robbing them of moisture and nutrients, and many native weeds are just likely candidates to attract pests and diseases into your garden where you don't want them. I hope you can utilize these tips and tricks on how to keep your garden free of pests and diseases in your own home garden. Thank you to all the people who support us in our VIP club. Without them, we wouldn't be able to continue to share this information with you. And if you enjoyed this video, look up. There's another one you might enjoy equally as well. Thank you for watching.